So, I was perusing the internet the other day and I found this article with a very enticing title. Naruto, 10 things that make no sense about Might Guy. And I was like, huh, gotta give it a read. And, well, I skimmed over it and it's pretty terrible. It's in the CBR website, which I thought it was supposed to be like a, a serious website. But it's very obvious that the person who wrote this article didn't really watch Naruto because there's just so many mistakes and so many weird points uh, made in this text. It's so weird. And let's take a look at this because it's kind of a shit show. The guy introduces, or uh, might guy, talks about a little bit of steam. No big deal here in the beginning of the article. And then, well, it begins. So let's read together. Die Guy. The naming conventions in Naruto have never been subtle when it comes to lineages. The Nara clan has Shikaku, Shikamaru, and Shikadai, all based on the same naming style. Well, you know that's because Shika means deer in Japanese, and the Nara clan is very much related to deer, so it's essentially something Kishimoto does to make characters interesting, so... It seems like you're complaining about it, but every single author in the history of authors has done things like that, you know, using names to explain things without having to write things down and make boring uh, explanations. Okay, so when Might Guy's lineage was released, his lineage, well, he's a clan now, it shouldn't have been a surprise. Learning that his father's name was Might Die was shocking. Just for you, because... It wasn't really shocking for me, but that's okay, I guess. The biggest issue with Might Die was that his character was exactly the same as Might Guy, down to his rivalries and abilities. So that's just not true. Might Die didn't have a substantial rivalry. If you're implying that he had a rivalry with Kakashi's dad, that's just not the case because he wasn't even close to Kakashi's dad level. So they didn't have a rivalry and, well, sure, they, they were both users of Taijutsu, but Kai became much more powerful, but that's okay. He continues, There is no problem with introducing the family of a sideline character from a series. Well, this guy is not really sidelined. He's not a you know a main character, but I would say he's pretty important. But that's okay. But to make what is essentially a carbon copy is not as exciting as it could have been. What? I mean, okay. Though the progression of the eight gates from Dai to Guy is the only redeemable part of the eternal beginning. Okay, so this person really doesn't like Guy's dad. And if he says that Might Die is a carbon copy of Might Guy, this didn't get the point really of what Might Die was doing in the story. He was the person who had the ideal of the eternal youth, and he passed that on to Guy with a will of fire. That was essentially the entire point of the story, because his dad, he was weak. He was extremely weak for an average ninja. But even so, he went to rescue Guy and give his life to Guy, and that was a beautiful flashback in one of the best fights in the manga, so I don't know why you don't like Guy's dad, and I don't know why you would say that things don't really make sense, because they, they do, they do so much sense, <laughs> like, what the hell are you talking about? Okay, let's go to number nine. His rivalry with Kakashi. Guy believes wholeheartedly that Kakashi is his rival. Well, they are. Kakashi also believes that. <laughs> Even though Kakashi outmatches him in a almost every way? I mean, what? Sure, you haven't really watched the anime or read the manga, because yeah, Kakashi has ninjutsu and intellect to his side, but Guy was pretty good at taijutsu and he's a pretty good ninja overall but well this rivalry has led to guy being able to work well against sharingan users which is true you know he knew how to counter itachi you know looking at his feet and all that 
which it would be fine if there were more than three to four left in the world. <laughs> what? I mean, you know that the Uchiha mostly became the final antagonist, the most dangerous people in the end of the manga. I would say that knowing how to counter Sharingan may be one of the most useful traits a ninja could ever have. So, that's just complete bullshit, like, Jesus. <laughs> the rivalry is there so that fans can get a contrast to Kakashi's personality. True, yeah. Guy and Kakashi are very different individuals. The problem is that Kakashi is contrasted by his squad, particularly Naruto, so Guy ends up being over the top for no reason. No, 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 no. Kakashi is not contrasted by Naruto. Sasuke is contrasted by Naruto, okay? You really didn't watch the show, did you? Also, Guy seems confused whenever Kakashi goes through with killing. Yeah, I mean, K Kakashi doesn't have qualms about killing his enemies, but Guy is a more, you know, he's a good guy. He doesn't want to kill people, so he's more soft. But that doesn't mean he, he's, conf he's not confused about it. What? I mean, he doesn't agree if Kakashi kills people, but that doesn't mean it makes no sense. It actually makes sense because it makes for good drama in the narrative. His favoritism towards Rock Lee. Somehow, not his illegitimate son. Rock Lee is a better version of Guy in almost every way. Okay, you say that, but you don't really explain what you mean, right? In almost every way. What's Rock Lee better than Guy? I mean, certainly not Taijutsu, certainly not his Jutsu. I mean, he's a great character too, but that doesn't really mean things don't make sense in the narrative, but whatever. It is understandable that Guy would step in and care for Rock Lee when things get hairy, like during the tuning exams. But Guy takes it way further with him than doing any of his other students, okay? Yeah, I agree. I mean, you're gonna have a favorite student that's allowed. Well, it's not very ethical, but it's okay, I guess. His squad consists of Rock Lee, Neji, and Tenten, yet fans really only see him with Rock Lee. Not true, we see him Guy with Neji and Tenten all the time as well. They work as a team, they go to missions, we saw flashbacks with all three of them. Of course, Guy has, uh, you know, a deeper bond with Rock Lee because they are similar people. They are all both underdogs that lack talent and Guy saw himself in Rock Lee and that's why he trains Rock Lee so hard. But that doesn't mean he doesn't really care about Neji and Tenten. Okay, this is so prevalent that the two of them have team moves for the Naruto fighting games. Oh my god, guys. Guy and Lee have team moves in Naruto Storm. What are we gonna do about it, Guy? He, he has to have team moves with Tenten. Dude, come on. Of course he, they have team moves in the games. Who cares about that? Lee and Guy are gonna look cool in team moves in video games. What's the problem with that? I don't get it. Okay. But Guy doesn't have this bond with Neji and Tenten. Blah, blah, blah. In a way, it is Guy's fault that Tenten didn't have more screen time. <laughs> For that, he cannot be forgiven. Let's kill Guy because Tenten didn't have enough screen time. Do you know whose actual fault it is for Tenten not having enough screen time? Kishimoto's. It's Kishimoto who chooses who's gonna get screen time. Not Guy. And nobody really liked Tenten. She didn't have interesting powers. She didn't have an interesting character. So, yeah, we're glad Tenten didn't have more screen time. We, we needed more Rock Lee and Neji screen time. But Tenten, no thanks. Number seven. Jutsu user. Okay. Guy is the weird middle stage between his father, who had no abilities outside of Taijutsu, and Rock Lee, who... Oh, who what? who also had no abilities outside of Taijutsu? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Um, so you're saying that he's the middle stage between his dad, who could only use Taijutsu, and Rock Lee, who could also only use Taijutsu, which means that both Rock Lee and Might Die were in the same spectrum. Right? So, Guy's not in the middle of them, he's like in the same league, not even league, in the same 
place of them. You should have said something different, like, guys in the middle stage between, I don't know, his dad and Kuranai who only uses Genjutsu. Like, ah, this, I don't know, the way the, this is written is just kind of bad, too. The problem here is that Might Guy does not have ninjutsu abilities. Mm, that's arguable, he has some ninjutsu. He can use some ninjutsu, but anyway. He even has his elemental releases known to be fire and lightning. Mm, I I don't know about that, I don't have to, to check the data book, but okay. I'm not sure if he does. But if you're if you're talking about fire style, if you saw him using Yasakujaku and saying that uh, that's fire style. It's not Yasakujaku, I think it's Asakujaku, but anyway. That's not fire style, okay? It's not fire release. That's guy punching so hard and so fast that the friction with it, of his fists with the air causes the air to ignite on fire. That's not fire release, if that's what you mean. Which I hope it isn't. It doesn't feel like his character was flashed out as the Konoha 11 or Kakashi because even when he is introduced fully, he's accompanied by a summoned creature. <laughs> so? Which is a high level jutsu. Adding him as a rockly mentor is fine, but acting like he's solely a taijutsu user is weird given he's regularly seen using other jutsus and hand signs. Okay, I'm not sure when Guy used a hand sign? He has the the weird hand sign for Hirudora, but that's unique to him and it's something he uses for Hirudora. By the way, Hirudora is not ninjutsu, it's taijutsu. It's essentially Guy's physical prowess manifested into a giant tiger. Okay, so people don't get that confused, which I'm pretty sure this guy had it confused. But yeah, what's the problem with him being introduced with a summon? Like, that doesn't really mean anything, right? And that was a funny scene. It was a great scene. I don't know what this guy is complaining about. And he is fully flashed out. I mean, he is probably outside of Team 7 and the Hokage, the best character in, in terms of being flashed out in the entire show, at least in Konoha. The Deadly Eight Gates. The Eight Gates is a powerful technique that only four people in the world can use, being Might Die, Might Guy, Rock Lee, and Metal Lee. That's not true at all! Kakashi can also use the Eight Gates, and there's probably other ninjas that can use it as well, but we just never saw them. While the others haven't been using this technique as much, Guy regularly throws down the first two gates for fun, yeah, this is implied because Guy is more powerful than the others and his body can withstand the power of eight gates much better. You know, in the beginning of Shippuden, we saw that Guy could kind of shrug off the sixth gate. He didn't really get tired and, you know, his body didn't get destroyed like Rock Lee's got in the tuning exams when he just opened the fifth gate. But that's just because he has trained more and he's just more powerful. You know, he's a jonin, he's older, he has more experience. Everything we know about the eight gates says that every new gate opened is supposed to hurt, cripple, or even kill the user, which makes the many times guy uses them seem overzealous. What? No, no, they're not overzealous. And guy doesn't really spam the eight gates? Okay, let's go through this. He uses it, them for the first time against Kisame's body double in the beginning of Shippuden and the, his students were, you know, drowning so it was very important for him to, to end the battle early. Then he only uses the gates again later on in Shippuden against Kisame when Kisame was about to run with information on the location of the last two Jinchuriki so it was very important for a guy to take him down soon, so he just used the seventh gate and destroyed Kisame, and then he used the, the gates in the war, which was also an important situation, okay? He was fighting for the survival of the world there, so I don't think he was overzealous when he used his gates, like, he was actually using them pretty sparingly, if you think about it. Even in the final big fight he participates in, he unleashes his 8th gate move, Night Guy, which is supposed to kill him, true. Yet, it only leads to a mostly damaged right leg, which is 
significantly better than death. Okay, okay, you know why he didn't die, right? Because Naruto came in and rescued him. Naruto got essentially godlike powers and rescued Guy from death, but he was going to die. It was very much implied. And I don't like that Guy didn't die in that fight because he should have. It would have been more impactful, but still. He didn't die because Naruto saved him, not because the Eight Gates didn't work the way they were explained in the past. Come on, man. Just... Okay. Kisame who? Oh, wow. Guys, rivalry with Kisame makes absolutely no sense for several reasons. Why would it not make sense? Come on, they fought several times. Okay, the first is that, though Guy and Kisame have fought several times near enough to death to be memorable, Guy cannot seem to remember him. Oh, okay, now characters cannot have traits anymore, okay? Guy cannot be a forgetful guy that has problems with faces, to recognize faces, because that's illegal, apparently. You can't, I mean, come on, man. Guy is used a lot of the time as comic relief, and that's kind of what he's supposed to do, he's supposed to be funny, and it's funny as hell when he doesn't remember like a really important character's face, like he forgot Madara's face, he forgot Kisame's face, it's funny when he does that, and it's just Guy, man, Guy's amazing. Work the way they were explained in the past, come on, man, just... Okay. Kisame who? Oh, wow. Guy's rivalry with Kisame makes absolutely no sense for several reasons. Why would it not make sense? Come on, they fought several times. This is explained by Guy's inability to remember faces. Yeah, exactly, but that doesn't explain why he doesn't remember Samehara, a living sword. Um, what? I mean, I'm pretty sure he remembers Samehara, or not, I don't care, but still, like, he doesn't even mention Samehara. Outside of their own bouts, Guy's father died. Died fighting the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, including the original wielder of Samehara, Fuguki Suikazan. Being part of the reason his dad died, it stands that Guy would remember a fishman using a demon shark sword much more than he does. Okay, sure, you could argue that, but then, the, you know, the thing that he forgets the faces is mostly done for comic relief, so I don't know why you're being so picky about it. Number four, he's a medicine man. In addition to spending all of his time training to be the very best ninja, not Pokemon trainer, wow, amazing pun here. Guy has had several stints in making medicine from herbs. I don't remember that. Is that a filler arc or something? This part of his character is never explained past the fact he can do it, and it has come in clutch several times. I don't remember him doing that. If somebody remembers it, please comment down below, because I certainly do not. And even if he's good at, you know, medicine and herbs and stuff, so what? I mean, yeah, he can be good at that. Who cares? And it, this has definitely not been clutch several times, because what was clutch was him using the 8th gate to delay Jubidara, okay? That's clutch, not using herbs to cure minor wounds. It feels like something that the writers needed to add to the character to make him seem less useless? You're saying that guy's useless? Dude, you haven't watched the anime, have you? Even though he is a skilled fighter. Yeah, he's a skilled fighter and he doesn't really have skills with herbs as far as I know. I mean, okay, rather than making him more healing ninja than Sakura Inu Tsunari and Shizune, guy was written to be medicine man. Okay, these ones that you mention here are like the best healing ninjas in Konoha's and Guy, that's not his speciality, he's not good at ninjutsu and you know, like everybody knows that you have to have extremely good ninjutsu chakra control in order to be a good healer, something Guy does not have, so he specializes in something else, he could never in his life be a healer. Let's not forget the sum of what that medicine is booze, which Lee takes it every so often. Okay, okay, okay. Guy likes his alcohol. So what? That doesn't mean he's a medicine man. And Rock Lee just drinks it twice, and one time is in the flashback when Guy is explaining it to Tsunade, so we only see Drunk Lee as a matter of fact for once, okay, against Kim Kimimaru. That's the only time we actually get to see real Drunk Lee. 
Oh man, okay. He is a modern puncher. Number three. This was a plot thread that fans should have seen coming during the pain arc, but it was a bit disruptive to one of the major battles of the series, where only Guy was able to fight against Madara as the Ten Tails in Churiki. Yeah, wh why was it disruptive? I mean, everything was in shit. No one else was able to fight against Madara because you had to have Sage Mode, and Minato sucked at Sage Mode. Hashirama was incapacitated, Naruto almost died and was being healed, so Guy was the only option. So that makes sense, man. I don't know what you're complaining about. Oh, yeah, well. As a master of mostly taijutsu, he was the perfect candidate, as Guy was the only one who could hit him. Yeah, exactly. You said it yourself. I don't know why you're complaining about it. The problem comes with ensemble media in general as sometimes the big fights have to be fought by lesser characters. Uh, right. But it to this point, Madara was the big bad, so having a smaller character like Guy be the major attacker would be like having Reza Hawkeye be the only one who could fight Father in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. They're good characters, but not to 1v1 the final battle. Okay, no, no okay. So comparing Guy to Reza Hawkeye from Full Metal Alchemist makes no sense. For one, because Reza or Hawkeye, I don't know what's the more popular name to call her, I think it's Hawkeye actually. But still, she is a character, she's a good character and an important character. I think she probably has the same importance to the narrative as Guy has for Naruto. But they are not comparable in a fight against the final boss because R Hawkeye does not have power. She does not um, possess the magic system in the Full Metal Alchemist world. She's Mostly a support character. She uses a gun while other people use alchemy. So she wouldn't be able to fight the final boss. Guy, on the other hand, is one of the most powerful ninjas in Konoha. He has shown that he's very powerful in battle. And we knew about the 8th gate, you know, the power to surpass a Hokage since the tuning exams. So there's nothing wrong with Guy fighting Jubidara, and he doesn't even win the fight, and the fight is amazing, like, it's probably top three manga fights, so I don't know what you're complaining about, really. 2. Youth It is fine to have a catchphrase. Most of the characters in the Nar Naruto universe have one. No, not most of them, I mean... Whatever. Naruto's is believe it. Shikamaru's is what a drag, and Sakura is cha. Might Guy has a catchphrase that is surrounded by different words, seemingly every time. That word is a heartily yelled youth. Yeah. So, like, it's great when he yells youth because it's his character. It would be a different issue if he just yelled springtime of youth. No, that would be really dumb. Don't do that. Like, you should not be writing Naruto, man. Sorry, but this is a stupid idea. But he's constantly pouting that things that are about youth when they are mundane parts of... Yes, that's exactly what it means. Guy finds, you know, good things in regular stuff. He wants you to be better. He wants you to call upon your youth. He wants you to live your life. That's what youth means. It is overall just confusing to have a ninja in his 30s constantly yelling about youth unironically. No, it's not. That's what Guy stands for. That's what he's doing, man. You don't get it, right? You don't get it. Like, come on. <sighs> We're pretty ready for Boruto to hear Guy say youth and scream OK Boomer at him. Okay, that's a great joke, man. <laughs> but seriously, like... That's the point of Guy's character. He can see something that's weak, maybe powerless, and he can empower it. He can say, you still have youth within yourself. You can still fight. You're still great. And that's the point of it. Even though he's older now, he still has the spirit of youth, the power of youth. Number one, sickness and tortoises. This is going to be a problem for any ninja in the world of Naruto. But how does sea sickness 
exist in a world where you can walk on water. The most prominent use of sickness is sea sickness is Guy when he has to travel along with Naruto to the Tortoise Island. How does it exist in a world you can walk on water? So just because you can walk on water, it doesn't mean you can use a boat, and it doesn't mean people are gonna have seasickness. Like, you're just not making much sense here, dude. In addition to seasickness, the series makes his relationship with tortoises varied. What? His <laughs> summoning jutsu allows him to summon a variety of tortoise and turtles. I think we only see him summon the one. We don't see a variety, as far as I remember. From small ones to Ningame. Okay, it's Ningame. That's his name? Okay. I never saw Guy summoning another turtle. If he has, please comment down below, but I don't remember it. The giant island that the heroes go on, on the back of a giant tortoise, who presumably is a much more advanced part of the tortoise family. What? I mean, whatever. When Guy learns the island is a tortoise, he reacts with fear. Not intrigue, which would make more sense since he has a pact with his kind and could potentially use it in the future. Okay, not, it's not because something is a turtle that you have a pact with it. Like, guy doesn't have a pact with every single turtle in the world. And like, wouldn't you be afraid if you saw a massive turtle as large as an island? Like, dude, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever what you're saying here, but that's okay. I mean... It pains me that somebody actually wrote this article and probably got paid to do it. Like, there are so many mistakes here, so many bullshit. Like, what the hell? Like, oh, it's. I know Naruto. Misinformation about Naruto is not going to change anyone's lives, but I, I guess the, these websites are so clickbaity and they just write whatever they think they should just to get some clicks. This whole thing is shit. And, well, I guess that's all I had to talk about. This thing is complete wrong, like... There's... A, there isn't a single point here that's worth being made. Everything is either obvious or outright wrong. And, well, if you like this style of video, comment down below, I can do more because... Believe me, there are many more of these. Like, this is the tip of the iceberg. These websites really like making bad Naruto content. And if you like you know, these debunking videos, comment down below and I'll make more of them. Remember to like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.